Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to make the Starbucks coffee render. I'll cover everything from modeling to rendering, so let's get started. First of all, go to the description and download assets from the resources link. You'll find references for can, the label for the coffee and links to add-ons used in this video. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll focus only on modeling the overall shape of the can without the top, but if you want to get a can with the tab, I included some references for this part as well. So let's start with the modeling the can. I already put the reference there, but it's not aligned with the center. So let's do this real quick. Let's get mesh, cylinder, and just, you know, get the, let me actually enable screencast keys so you can see what I do. I just place this scale. So we match with the cylinder, just like that. Edit mode, and let's just, you know, place this here. And here, in order to have a smooth transition, like here, we'll have to add bevel later when we go to the subdivision surface. So for now, let's just roughly align this. Just extruding, scaling, easy stuff. Just like that, perfect. Let's do the bottom real quick with some inserting, just like that, that, and one more and push this to the top and this one also just a bit. So on these faces, our can will stand on the floor. Go to the top, same stuff like that. Some more extrusions, Let's add one here like that. Some more. Now here, let's add one loop cut like that, like that. As you can see, here we have the edge. So here we have to go there that, like that, and maybe one more here. And now, as I told you, I'm not focusing on the top today. Do some kind of, I don't know, dummy top. This will be fine, just like that. And we have our can modeled. So let's now add subdivision surface. And as you see here, we have lost some of the details, especially on these creases. So let's add this back with some bevel magic. Let's see how it looks like. Looks great. Go to the top. And the option X or on Windows Alt X is these show overlay stuff. This is not a default shortcut. You can just set it using right mouse key and then change shortcut and set your own. One more bevel and it looks pretty good. Now let's scale this a bit so it fits with the reference. It's pretty much fine, but you know, just tiny, tiny like that. And also we need to add one bevel here. Great. Now we have to do some UV unwrapping. And in this case, we will have to add pretty much two UV maps. One UV map will be for the label and the other one will be for fingerprints. So we have to add three seams. One seam will go somewhere, let's say, on the back of the can. The other one where the label ends. So it's like there. And the last seam will go there we will have the end. One more time, let's pick this one on the top. This one, awesome. U, mock scene. And now let's see if we have the uniform scale. And as you see here, it's slightly off. So it always has to be in the uniform scale. Otherwise we'll have the UV map a bit messed. So, you know, control A, scale, that's it. Let's select all of these, unwrap. And we have to add some materials. The reason I add materials first is just because I want to show you how the UV mapping process looks like and why it has to be done. So let's add real quick the label and let's plug it to base color. As you see here, complete mess. So UV unwrap, go to UV editing. I forgot to mark seam one thing now. UV unwrap, awesome. Let's select just this part where we will have the label visible. So we deselect it using another add-on that is included there, UV layout, rectify. Let's rotate this and take a look how it's already changing the stuff. Let's place this. You can also click crop and just scale this also a bit on the x-axis, just like that. Perfect. And as you see here, we have some distortions over there and that's because the subdivision. So advanced and keep corners. Works just fine in this case. 
So before adding fingerprints, let's add the metallic material. So for the label, we, all we have to do is just to go with metallic and something like 0.8 and roughness 0.3. Now let's add the material for the rest of the can, which will be pure metal. And we can do this using just click. Let's just select where we have our can real quick. We can do this like that with shift like that. And the last one is this one. Awesome, then Control i to invert. And now we have selected everything but where we have our label, plus, new, assign. And we have our can. Let's name this metal. And this one will be label. So metal, pretty simple, is just fix the slightly off-white color to pure white, and then roughness to 0.3, metallic to 0.8, and then go and add some fingerprints. Let's add the textures. And let's see how this looks like on our UV map. I feel like it's a little bit stretched. So to fix this, there's one easy solution. Just add another UV map. Let's call this one label and this one fingerprints. And now you have to add UV map node. Plug this here and there, fingerprints. Let's create a UV map for this one. Control I. Bam, rectify, crop. Now rotate this one like that. Crop and scale this just a bit so we have our texture seamless. Great, and it looks much better. You can also manipulate a bit where you have your fingerprints using a mapping node. Let's plug this here. And now changing the location, you can adjust this to your liking. So now we have to somehow combine these textures with the principled BSDF. So to do this, we'll use mix node, set as color. And we have to change this to add a factor. Let's leave it as it is and just plug color here. And it's very subtle as a base color. This will be more prominent once we add the roughness. Let's focus on the factor for now and change this to something like 0.6. And now let's get the same node and plug roughness to the bottom socket. And in the top socket, we'll choose the roughness we have here. So here's the value of 0.3. And we have to make the same value here. So 0.3, plug this to roughness and look what happens. Much better. And last thing I forgot about is to change the color space for the color to non-color as it's only black and white and same for roughness. You can leave sRGB color space for the color and go with non-color for the roughness. And using the factor value, you can decide how much you want this to have prominence, something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 should be fine. The next thing to do is to add some droplets and you can add droplets using paid add-on called the droplet generator. This one costs something like 10 or 15 bucks on Blender Market. And the advantage of this add-on is that you have actually some support for animations. You can add some kind of animated droplets. You see these and you can animate this using the long animate parameter. Also, these look just much, much better than the free options, but that's just one option. And the other option is to use a free add-on also called Droplet Generator by Jeppe. And this one is, like I said, free. And you can add this using File, Append. And by clicking on Droplet Generator Blend, you go to Node Tree, Droplet Generator, add Geometry Nodes and pick this one. This is our add-on, play with the size the density and just decide how many droplets you want to have. And the big advantage and the main reason I would say that you should consider using an add-on is that you have already a pre-made shader that can fix some problem later on. When you have your some weird shading on these droplets that look fake, you can just play with limit ray depth and limit shadows to prevent such stuff from happening. So let's just really quickly adjust this to our needs. So some smaller will be cool. Yeah, just like that. Awesome. Next thing to do is to add the mirror-like plane. Let's just take our can to the top. And actually you can scale this a bit down because like it's five meter tall. Let's keep this around one and a half meter. And the reason why I don't 
use a realistic proportion like this can in real life should be i don't know 10 15 centimeters and the reason we got such a big scale is that you have to play with the size of the drop generator again and let's just place this thing nicely there add the plane scale this up go to the shading and the principle for this one is to go with specular all the way to one and roughness all the way to zero great now let's add the color and the color that works here is this one i just found this one looking best from in my case let's rotate this thing awesome and i want to show you just how it looks like so let's add the camera and we'll go with something like 1200 and 1500 go to zero camera view let's divide our workspace put it to the top and as you see here we have this kind of stretching that is by because we have by default 50 millimeter focal length let's go with 90 in the viewport display let's go with passport out all the way to one so we don't see anything other than can and obviously change the render engine to cycles go with gpu compute and let me reduce my samples to 200 let me can look high contrast and I guess there will be yeah there is something visible obviously this isn't any i don't know lighting for now it's just you know to show you what i mean with this reflective plane so the next thing is to add some coffee beans on the bottom and you should go with definitely some you know assets that you can buy or download because it will be pretty time consuming stuff to model coffee beans yourself as it has so many details and it's pretty easy to mess up so there are many good paid assets on the internet but in this case we'll use a blender kit add-on that already has some good coffee beans so let's add this thing here and it's very very small let's pick the empty and scale this all the way up and the good thing about this particular model is that we didn't have to mess with rigid bodies to you know get our coffee beans down we already have this kind of done so now we have to delete some coffee beans to you know give the place for our can and the way we'll do this is to go to this thing and select the cursor and now we can select click this and you can't anymore select the can also let's hide the empty and go to c and you see to just have the circle selection click that and delete and as you see we almost have no coffee beans intersecting with our can the rest we can just delete manually not a big deal get the let's get the plane back and we can drag select all these coffee beans by right click and select objects or we can just let's just select the empty and go with this a bit to the top so we don't have so much intersecting all right so now let's work on some fluid splash and normally i would go with flip fluids which is another paid add-on this one is more expensive because it costs something like 70 80 dollars but in this case i will go with just mant flow as Honestly, it's pretty fine for still renders. Let me disable the geometry nodes. And we have to go with some dummy obstacle that will be low poly compared to our original one. And we can delete the one half of this product. Let's delete this. And let's just select this and that and scale this on the X axis a bit like that. This will help us with the splash because normally the splash will kind of wrap around the can and we have to go this one to spread a bit. Let's delete every other loop. So we are further reducing the poly count and we can also go with that out. So we have no pretty low poly object, which is great, which will make our fluid simulation faster. We can add some angon. You can call this obstacle so now let's set up the domain so just add cube place this like that basically how we want our domain to be this will determine where we will have our fluid action happening so don't have any unnecessary space here as this will make your fluid simulation process longer something like that will do the job so now let's go to physics properties click fluid and choose the type domain already something's going on 
Let's apply the scale, set origin origin to geometry. And now change the domain type to liquid. And for whatever reason, this became a solid. I don't know why, probably this has to do something with mesh. Let's go with resolution divisions for now to something like 100, as we will have to probably run this simulation a couple of times. Let's go to frame end to something like 50, as we want to have only the splash type to all. And the last thing we have to do, actually few last things before we go with our first simulation is to add the inflow, which will constantly generate the fluid. Let's go with the sphere, control A to apply the scale. Now go to flow and flow type to liquid. Another thing is to add this one, go to fluid and vector. So we have collision. Also, let's remove all these unnecessary modifiers. Okay, collision, all that thing is okay. Now let's go to this one. And very important thing is to disable the gravity. For now, we won't generate any mesh as we want to first take a look if we have our inflow going the right way. Let's pick initial velocity. And now let's see on what direction we have our fluid going. So this one is the Y axis, this is X and to the top is the z-axis. So let's go on the y and let's pick probably minus 10, but I'm, I'm not sure, we'll see in a, in a minute. All right, so it seems that we have everything set. Now let's hit bake all. And depending on your machine, this can take quite some time. All right, as you see here, we have our simulation baked. So now let's see how it looks like. I forgot also to switch from flow behavior from geometry to inflow. I don't really use Manta flow on a daily basis, so forgive me guys. Uh, let's go to here's liquid and inflow. So we have the fluid constantly going, but as you see here, we are at least we picked the right direction. So we actually could go with baking some mesh. So let's go bake all. All right, so as you see here, we already have the simulation baked. So now let's take a look how it looks like. And we can probably do something about these particles. All right, so to me, it seems like we have too fast. So let's reduce a bit the initial velocity to something like minus five. This will be fine. And also I think we can go with the proper resolution of something like 200. And also we can go with end at 20 five instead of 50. We'll have also much faster, much shorter time. Let's go with 200, we'll be fine. And let's bake all again. Actually, let me hide the obstacle and enable the can so we can see kind of what's going on. Let's go and bake all. All right, so we have our simulation baked. Now let's see how it looks like. So that's how it looks like. You can go to modifiers and disable liquid particle system and that's way too much fluid. So let's go back to settings and we can actually scale this down a bit, something like that. Now just guys looking what looks good. Let's free all and get down resolution divisions to something like 150 and bake to, let's go with 15 frames instead of 25 and bake all again. All right, that looks much better. Let's see. And here's our splash done. Something like that should be fine. So, you know, just scrap through the timeline and check what you like the most. Yeah, let's go with this one. So if you're sure about which one you wanna go with, let's go with Control A and Visual Geometry to Mesh. That way we don't have any more the fluid simulation. We only have the still. Now let's shade this smooth and we can also get some smooth modifier and then just go with repeat. I suggest something like um, 20 or 10. Yeah, 10 looks great. So we have our coffee splash done. So now it's time to work on some lighting. And the way I do lighting for almost all my works is to do the gradient light. And the gradient lights I almost every time do with just a plane like that and go to the shader editor, add new material, delete principal BSDF, go with emission, then gradient, color ramp and control T if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. This is built in, so 
feel free to enable it if you haven't. Go with object and now we have our gradient light done. And also for the coffee material, we'll go later once we get the lighting done. So we can pick our perfect coffee material. All right, so let's go to check if we are in cycles. Yes, we are. Let's disable the world background to zero so we don't have any illumination from the default gray color. And let's place our first light. This will be the key light. Let's go, let's do this one like that. And also very important thing is to go to object properties, visibility, ray visibility, and the disable the camera. That's what it does. And we can't see anymore our object. Okay, so let's place this around. Kinda looks fine. Let's try something like that. Scale this. Awesome. Can go some strength up. Very nice. Second light will be on the other side with normal rotation. Like that. Just you know, guys, you have to look what looks great for you. Here are the principles, I would say. Second light added. Also go to film and enable transparent and transparent glass, as we'll be adding the kind of background in the Photoshop later on. Now, if you want to have different strength for this one light and this other, you just have to click here. So we have two different materials for this stuff. Awesome, even more. Great, and this one is slide here. And sometimes when you have the black design of the can and black background, you won't see the outline of this can because it falls into the background. So the easy solution for this is to add a plane without any materials, put this behind can, scale this a bit and go to object properties and also camera visibility. And what this does is this has this nice rim that reflects these two lights, just this light bounces. Take a look, now we have no rim light and now we have the rim light. And the amount of rim light can be adjusted just by scaling this. Now we have so much rim and now it's subtle. Let's go with something like that. Now let's add some more lights and now we'll go with just area as this will be accents. Add one line behind the can. So we have some lighting on the downside of the can, I would say. And also this will add some lighting to our fluid. Let's get this up so we don't have any reflection on the glass like that. And rotate this so it goes to the can. Nice. Even further. Great. And the same thing on the other side. So just a 3D cursor and rotate on Z axis like that. And this also is very cool because it adds the light for the coffee beans. Also later on, we'll add some HDRI to give some subtle lights, especially for the coffee beans, which will be very appreciated. Go like that. And this also adds some nice highlights to the bottom part of the can that's covered with also beans and the fluid. All right. And the last light for now, is to add some lighting to the front of the can. And this one can be done with just area light like that. Okay, on local y-axis, get this to the top. Awesome, nice. Let's check the strength. All right, we can reduce a bit the strength on this one. Nice, and this one, okay. You can also scale this one a bit and then reduce some. Great, now let's add the HDRI that I mentioned before, and we'll see how it looks like with the HDRI. Something like 0.3, awesome. You can also go to hue saturation value and check if we have too much some color influence, then we can go with hue saturation and just drop the saturation to zero. But I kind of like this one. It's it's pretty, it's some reddish orange colors. I can show you. It's turning off transparent and on saturation one, you can see. So this fits our scenario. Great. We have some shadows that goes from these plain lights. You can do disable this with ray visibility. Just click off the shadow. And for this one, we can do the same. Great. And now let's play with some material for our coffee. Let's just get the part of this object, select this one, and let's go with multi-scatter GGX. This will help us with the subsurface scattering. Let's do something like, oh, let's first play with base color. So coffee will be something like that. Yep, probably lesser value, exactly. Roughness to almost zero. We can do something like that. 
specular is fine, IOR for coffee. So in our case, the IOR will be something like 0.35 as this is the IOR for milk. And this is pretty much just, you know, some milk coffee drink. So it will be more milk than coffee, I believe. 1.35 is fine. Now let's add some subsurface on 0.2 will be fine. And the color will be reduce this. Actually, let's go with some subtle value like that. Saturation down, it's too reddish. Go with more orange tone. All right, so here we have our coffee material. Doesn't look bad. Work on some colors more. I guess that's even better. Yeah, maybe saturation 2.6.7. Bit more orangey and value probably a bit up. Okay, that's fine. So here we are with our Blender artwork done. Last thing we have to do is to render this out, put this into Photoshop, add the background and play some with the camera roll filter. So the last thing we have to do before going to Photoshop is obviously rendering this. So let's go and check for some render options. So max samples, something like thousand samples will do the job. Denoise, if you have a graphics card that supports ray tracing, obviously go with optics. I don't have one, so I go with open image denoise. Look high contrast in transparent, transparent glass. Also, you can add some transparency to the coffee. Just not too much. I haven't even noticed this because of just not a transparent fluid, right? Something like 0.5 will be good, exactly. Okay, so thousand samples, denoise, filmic high contrast, transparent, that's great. So last thing before we go to Photoshop and before we render the stuff is to disable from the rendering the obstacle and the sphere that is that was our inflow object. Now let's see if our droplets are correct. Yep, they are fine. All right. And let's also add some coffee beans that will be floating in the air. Pretty cool stuff like that. Now just some random rotations, random places like this. Awesome. You can also add the depth of field if you wish, but that's not necessary in such a shot. And you can do this just by adding some empty in the middle, going to camera, enabling depth of field and focus object for the empty we just added like that. Let's go to rendered view and see what it makes. Changing the f-stop, you can see how much depth of field we have. I won't be doing this because it's not necessary for this shot. So now let's go with rendering and I'll see you in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, let's start from doing the some color correction, which will be done using camera row filter. Let's go to filter, camera row filter. And first of all, we have to work on some Exposure contrast, this thing. So let's just see what looks great. Right, a bit of exposure up, some more contrast, some highlights, shadows goes down to give more contrast to the scene. Whites up, blacks down. Texture is something like 40, I found looking great. This helps to enhance all the textures we got there. Let's check clarity, down a bit, dehaze, at zero will be fine. Saturation, let's see if at zero. Go to curve, also highlights up, lights, sun like that, darks down, shadows down. In details, just sharpening, let's go to 20. And now with color mixer, now we can play with our colors. So some coffee beans are picked as red. So let's try to make this more orange. We have oranges. Yellow to go for the can. So let's leave it sun like zero. Greens are okay. Now let's go to saturation, sun like that. Oranges could be a bit more saturated to make this more tasty. Yellows are fine. Now with luminance, we can make our coffee beans lighter. Orange is also a bit lighter, yellows like that. So it's all about, you know, just some details like that. Looks cool. Now let's add the background. And the background, this will be just a simple gradient. So I just take the gradient tool and pick two colors. Well, I just pick two colors. One color, the darker one will be from there. And the lighter color will be from, let's pick it from here. Okay. Okay, okay, and now let's add the gradient at the middle. Let's see how it looks like. And now obviously we have to work some on the harsh edge we have there. So let's just add the mask to this one and with very subtle brush, 
we can just erase some color. Let's go with the opacity of, let's say 50%, smooth brush, and just work like that all the way across the artwork. Here we have to go with bigger brush as we have some huge transition like that. Even reduce the opacity for some parts. So we have a very smooth gradient going there. Bring back some of the color if it's too much, too visible. And just like that, we have our render processed and done.